How's it going, everybody? Check out that tree. I don't know if y'all can see all the red and the different colors to it, but I love fall. It makes some beautiful things in nature. Now, today what we're going to be doing is, I guess what I'm going to call Shop Talk Tuesday or something like that. Uh, these videos will be releasing on Tuesday, so you'll have my regular videos that release on Friday. And uh, those are going to be knife content, things like that. These are going to be just more commentary type things. Uh, now, what I'm going to show y'all real quick, a little bit of behind the scenes of what I got going on. So this is my 11 by 11 shop. So my regular shop is 12 by 12 square feet, or 12 by 12 feet. This is 11 by 11 feet. And uh, it's a, a little bit smaller, but it's going to be the perfect size for the type of stuff that's going to be done in here. So the forge is going to go in here, the anvil is going to go in here, my uh, belt grinder and different sanders and things like that are going to go in here, and there's going to be a dust collection in here. Now, this is just going to be for stuff like that, so I don't have to worry about all the dust particles in the main shop. Now, uh, that's going to be pretty much for fit and finish, doing sharpening and things like that. That's all going to happen in the main shop. But let's go ahead and hop in the main shop real quick. Okay. So, like I was saying, this is just going to be kind of commentary based. So, pretty much anything that y'all comment or questions that y'all have on the channels or on the channel, they're going to be answered here. And it's kind of so that we can have a little bit of back and forth and things like that, and y'all can control this video series a little bit. Uh, if you want to have some say so in that, go in the comment section, tell me what you want to talk about in the next uh, Shop Talk Tuesday and uh, we'll actually add that in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and answer a few comments and things. Uh, I, I'm not gonna do much of that in this video just yet because I want to get y'all kinda going with it. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I was told in one of the videos where I used my angle grinder to cut something uh, was why don't you use a guard on your angle grinder. Uh, it's definitely a safety thing. You should use your guard on your angle grinder if you've not had much practice or if you don't wear glasses and you're not being, you know, protective with yourself. Um, I haven't had a guard on any of my angle grinders in probably 12 years just because I've used them so much. Uh, once you've used them enough, you can actually kind of depict where the, you know, the metal uh, sparks and things like that are going to go or things that are flinging off your blade. You can manipulate the blade rotation, whether you're using your right or your left hand, to make sure those things aren't flying towards your face. Uh, I've got uh, thousands of hours worth of using angle grinders. Um, before I started doing stuff like this, I did stone work. So a lot of cutting stone, um, even doing granite countertops and having to use my angle grinder to cut sinkholes and polish things and grind things. And once you've done it long enough, you just get used to not having those guards on there. But if you wear baggy clothes, it's good to have a guard. I don't wear baggy clothes and I never hold my angle grinder up close to me, so I don't have to worry about something getting caught in there. Um, not to say I didn't learn from experience and figure that out. Yep, about 10 years ago I caught a shirt and an angle grinder. It was not cool. Uh, so, it's things that you learn in the process. Um, and then one of my other comments, good old Kyle from Plant Based Outdoors calling me out on my anvil here. Good old Harbor Freight. Now what I did do on this is I did completely resurface the horn, resurface the whole top, the edge, squared everything. This was absolutely pointless on the original uh, way it was set up, and so was the horn, because this had that real heavy hammer finish uh, coating on it, so everything was shaved off, completely rounded, cleaned up, all this was all squared up, the hardy hole was squared up. Uh, I went ahead and did all of that just because I wasn't ready to buy an expensive anvil and I could have used a train track because I have three feet of train track but I wanted an actual anvil um, I might do a video on shaping that train track into an anvil but uh, I didn't want to do that just yet I wanted an actual anvil to practice on and that's what this is for now 
a lot of people make the mistake of going and spending thousands of dollars on a hobby that they're just getting into without really trying out all of the crafty crap uh, because sometimes you have to improvise if you want to get into a hobby and you're not improvising in any way shape or form you're not learning as you're going through because there's certain things you need and certain things you don't need depending on your skill set and when I first started this I didn't need an anvil I was doing everything as stock removal uh, whenever I'm getting into the whole uh, hammering material out moving metal I did not need a $600 anvil I just needed something that worked and this works I've already started using it and it's just fine um, so but I did think it was funny whenever he called me out on that uh, yeah it is Harbor Freight half the tools in this shop are Harbor Freight I don't really care I'm perfectly fine with it they do their job and I don't need super expensive things to to do this if you couldn't tell I make you know plenty of cool knives without having you know all of the best things in the world but um so yeah a couple of those comments ans answering those um if you like I said if you want to kind of tailor what I talk about in this uh it's a different series just leave a comment in the comment section and we'll talk about it um what I have coming up in the next video that you'll see on Friday is going to be me actually finishing this knife right here. So this one uh, is just a real simple uh, cam knife slash bushcraft knife that I'm going to be making. Uh, it's like an everyday carry thing that you can carry. And then it's actually got two other ones just like it but with different handle scales. What makes them similar is of course the shape and then they all have red G10 liners to tie them all together and then they have different versions of the same type of materials on the handles but this was unique having to be able to use a I, I use five minute epoxy whenever I'm uh, gluing up my handle scales to the knives and and doing three knives at once you have to be pretty quick so that was fun um, a few of the things that I'm gonna be talking about in these videos as well is different tools that I had to make for that week and uh, to be able to produce the knife or whatever I'm doing in the video that's coming up. So this last one, to do those knives, I made this jig right here. So it's a real simple one. Uh, this right here, I, I just put it to where the angle, I had to grind off the feet a little bit, which is just the bolt heads, to get the exact angle that I wanted. The blade just sits on top of this. But this is about as easy of a uh, jig that you can make. I mean, it really doesn't require much I see so many of these jigs that are made that have people that are tapping hardware into them and they're making threads in them and all this stuff and it's really not that necessary for something as simple as this. Some people kind of over engineer what they're making. It's the same thing as my little plunge line jig here. This is uh, real simple. Took me maybe 10-15 minutes to make. Uh, and it didn't require me to have taps or anything like that. Sometimes whenever I watch people's videos, I go, wow, you over-engineered the hell out of that. Uh, sometimes you don't need to do that. You just need to make it as simple as possible so you can use it and then move past. Um, but it makes it to where I can be as consistent as possible with a lot of these things that I do. Uh, some knives, I really won't be using any jigs to make them just because <clears throat> with how unique the shapes are there aren't many jigs that you can use to actually do the bevels on them but uh yeah other than maybe my plunge line jig um but yeah we got those uh this is a knife that i've got coming up this is one that i actually did hammer out so i am excited about that one i did shape uh the actual handle and this with uh the belt or the bandsaw um, but this was basically a taco it was completely bent this was an old lawnmower blade the one that I made the karambit out of but I'd already hammered that part flat this still had all the wave to it and everything <clears throat> so I had to hammer it all flat because I didn't want to do stock removal on this and make it thinner I wanted to leave its thickness and so I figured I would hammer it flat and it actually retained a lot of its thickness so <clears throat> Got that coming up. Uh, 
one of the things I want to let y'all know about, I've got a Facebook page now. Uh, it's just called TRE Workshop. I'm going to leave the link for that in the description. So if y'all want to go check that out, you get a more of a day-to-day -day, uh, communication with me on that. So check that out. Um, and yeah, like I said, use the comment section so that we can actually start trying to tailor these videos to things that y'all are interested in. Uh, hey, go down there, comment section, make sure you share this video or share your favorite video that I do. And uh, yeah, give it a thumbs up. Go down that bottom corner, hit the subscribe button. Without further ado, that's the end of this one. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time.